Welcome back makers, uh, having a nice Tim Hortons coffee, making some droids, life doesn't get any better than that. Uh, what we're going to do today in episode number three is look at uh, animating this head. So we're going to make him move left to right today, that's going to be the pan, and the next episode will be the tilt. I've got both those mechanisms finished and programmed, so if you're interested in that, stick around and I'll show you how to do it step by step. Hello makers, uh, welcome to another video um, involving C-3PO and animating his head. Uh, last episode we looked at the eyes and how I built the eyes. Uh, now we're going to take a look at moving the head around. So let me just grab 3PO and I'll just show you what I mean. Uh, so uh, my objective is to have the eyes light up, have his head move, and then have him speak. So we're going to look at the head movement uh, in the next uh, this video and in the next video to come, and then looking at uh, the speech a little bit later on when we look at the circuitry for this. So I really want him to be able to move forward and back this way, so we're going to call that tilt, and left and right, and that's going to be the pan. Uh, the other thing I really wanted uh, him not to do is to like shake a lot when he moves forward and kind of wobble when he's moving left to right. So I think I've accomplished uh, that properly by eliminating those movements and I'll show you how I did that uh, right now. So let's just put C3PO aside and, uh, and take a look at uh, the mechanism. So uh, I started off using a servo. Um, actually this one in particular, and I had this mounted in so that I had a linkage on it, and then when, I mo when the servo moved, it would move the head forward and backwards um, for the tilt. And you know, it worked, but once power was taken off of the servo, uh, the weight of the head would just like push the servo back and he would flop over, and I didn't really care for that. Uh, I know I can go with bigger servos and better gears and uh, large springs and whatnot to accomplish this, but there's a lot of ways to animate uh, droids. So I thought I'd take a look at something that's um, a system I haven't really used before and I'd like to experiment with, so uh, that's what I did. And one of my mottos is just because you can spend a lot of money on something like a large servo doesn't mean you really should. Um, you can accomplish the same thing uh, in a more cost-effective way and also learn a lot in the process. So uh, what I ended up doing was uh, using one of these. And this is a stepper motor. You'll find these in 3D printers. And um, this is a NEMA 17. It's a little bit narrower one. I wanted something a little bit smaller but with a lot of torque still uh, to operate 3PO's head. And stepper motors move in steps, so they, they spin clockwise or counterclockwise very accurately. And if you haven't used one of these before, don't be intimidated by it. Uh, they're pretty easy to use. If I can figure it out, anybody can. So I use the stepper motor for the, I use two of these, one for the tilt and one for the uh, pan. And also with the stepper motor, I have to use a microcontroller, so I chose to use this um, Arduino Nano. And I've got two of these in the head, and I'll show you a little bit more about uh, what they're actually going to do uh, in a future uh, episode. But um, the Nano sends signals to the stepper motor in order for it to operate. And particularly, it sends, um, hey, what direction do you, do you want it to go, and how fast do you want stepper motor to move? So uh, those are the things, those are the signals that, that it sends. Unfortunately, you can't just put a Nano and attach it to a stepper motor. Um, there's not enough power from a Nano to operate that guy. So along comes one of these. <clears throat> this is a stepper motor driver. Uh, this in particular is a very cheap one you can find in 3D printers. Um, it, they don't cost very much at all. It's an A4988. And I didn't really know much about stepper motor drivers before this, but now I do and uh, very easy to hook up um, even though there's quite a few pins here um, it's super easy and all you have to do is connect it to your stepper motor so uh, set this particular guy takes 12 volts so you feed this 12 volts it puts out enough uh, power and current for uh, for um, the stepper motor um, so it's in between the nano and the motor so nano sends signals to here 
this sends signals to there, and everybody's happy. These little um, drivers come with a little heat sink that you put on top uh, to dissipate the heat, and uh, it seems to work pretty well. So I hooked that up, and it worked great. Um, but I did find that um, the motor was kind of noisy. Didn't really like that. Uh, did some more research and found that all you need to do is upgrade to a better stepper motor driver. Uh, this is a TMC 2208. It's the same footprint as this guy, and you just basically hook them up the same way, except um, he's a bit better quality. And once I did that, this guy had no sound, so it was operating really well. So, love that. So I ended up with uh, going with this one here. So obviously I've got two of these in my system because there's two stepper motors. Now, an advantage that um, servos have is they have internal circuitry to tell the arm here um, where it, it is at any given time. So you could say, hey, move to 28 degrees and it'll move there, move back to zero, it'll move there. And uh, that's the advantage of servos. Stepper motors don't have that capability built in so you need to add something to it and um, you can add a limit switch. So uh, once the stepper motor gets to a certain limit, it'll trigger the switch and stop. All right. So once it stops, you can tell the sketch in your Arduino, hey, I'm at the limit. Let's call that step zero. And then if you want it to move in the other direction, you can say, OK, now move to um, say step 800 if that's your other limit, but don't go past 800. So from there you can go to 800 or 0, 800 or 0 or anywhere in between and um, that's how you set up your movements. Um, so that worked out pretty well. So uh, I can use one of these, but I decided, hey, let's take our learning a little bit further and eliminate this guy and replace him with something different. So um, I ended up using this. This is a Hall Effect sensor. And what a Hall Effect sensor is, it's got this little um, black thing right here. And what that is, it's a magnetic sensor. And if a magnet comes into close proximity to um, this guy, it will trigger one of these pins. So this one here has four pins. And one's ground, one's power, so that's easy. One's a digital out, one's an analog out. I don't need the analog out, I just need the digital out. So I'm just using three pins and you can buy these guys with just three pins as it is. I ended up buying this one that had the four. So I'm just gonna cut off that pin that I don't even need. And um, that's gonna be my limit. So I've got a magnet hooked up to the mechanism on my stepper motor. So when the magnet gets close to here, it triggers this and stops just like a limit switch would do. So that's my process for hooking up um, the nod and the tilt or the pan and the zoom, uh, sorry, the pan and the uh, tilt. And um, I will put, show you how I put that into my first set of uh, mechanics uh, next. Okay, let's take a look at my 3D files for the pan mechanism. I'm going to be using Gordon Tarplay's um, PVC frame, the one inch frame, to mount uh, the head onto. So that's going to start off with a PVC pipe. Uh, let's just pretend that's the, the pipe right there. Uh, on top of the pipe, we're going to have a uh, pipe adapter. And this is uh, got a little screw hole right there, so you can put a screw in just so that it doesn't swivel on that neck pipe. And it's got a slot over here for all the wiring to go through. So that's um, the first uh, 3D printed item. Uh, the next thing is uh, this part here. This is the hall sensor mount. So um, the hall sensor is going to be mounted to this part right here. So let's just zoom in and take a look at that. There's a slot so you can vary the position, the angle that you want that hall sensor. Plus it's got uh, these um, two positive stops here. This is just to prevent somebody from just taking the head and physically moving it when it's not operation, like not powered up, um, so it doesn't go past uh, 170 degrees or so. So uh, let's take a look at the hall sensor switch that's right here. So that um, that's about the size of it, and there's a little detector on there, and uh, it'll, that's how it's going to be mounted on there. Uh, next, we have our stepper mount. So. <clears throat> 
You can see that all these holes line up so far. Uh, there's some slots here where the stepper mount or the stepper motor is going to go, so you can slide it back and forth, tighten it if you have to. And uh, then we have our Lazy Susan. So this is the Lazy Susan I bought off Amazon. It's four inches. Uh, the inside swivels. Uh, the outside is going to be stationary. There's going to be eight bolts that uh, connect everything together. So the outer holes, uh, they have um, flathead bolts going from the top down to the bottom, right through all of it. And the inside mount has, hole, has the number 10 bolts going from the inside all the way up. And uh, it's just kind of put together like that. And then on top of this, we have a little spacer. Uh, it's about a one mil spacer or so because I don't want the next part to be rubbing against the outer lazy part of the Lazy Susan. Uh, then we have a large pulley. This is a 2GT pulley that I designed. Uh, it has all the teeth on here that match with the right uh, belt. And let's just swing around to the other side. This is actually the front of the face on this side. And this pulley has a hole here for a magnet. That's an eight mil by three mil magnet. And when the magnet, when this whole green pulley turns, uh, the magnet's gonna go get to this detector. This is the limit switch I talked about. And it's gonna stop the movement. And then it's gonna, from there, it's gonna go into random movements to a maximum of about over here or so. All right, uh, next, let's take a look at our NEMA 17. That's where it's gonna be mounted. On top of that will be the pulley for it. Very common pulley you find in 3D printers. Matches the teeth for um, for this guy here. And I don't have the belt modeled in, but the belt is a 400 millimeter belt. It says 400 mm on the side of it. That's how you know it's 400 millimeters. And by the way, the way they figured that out is if you cut the belt and laid it out flat, it would be 400 millimeters long. Um, I had to buy a variety pack before I got the right belt uh, for that. Uh, the neck is the next thing. This neck looks long and it is long. It's my own version of the neck. Um, it's got some mounting holes up here for our next part, the, the tilt mechanism. It also has some bearings or some bushings right here for the axle, uh, for the pivot for the neck. And around here is where the, um, let's see if I can do that. that. That's what the, the the neck's going to be, or the neck ring is going to be somewhere in here. This whole thing's going to actually be lowered down a little bit. Um, but I can always fix that by just changing the height of the neck if I have to later on. Uh, anyways, uh, those are the 3D renderings. I'm going to show you the actual um, parts now. And we'll assemble it and watch it in action. Okay, we're going to start off with the um PVC, this is the one inch um, pipe. I've already got it screwed into this um, adapter and I'm just holding it together with a vise right now, but there's a pretty awesome um, mount for this coming up in a future video. So I'll show you that later. So push that in and uh, we're gonna add our Hall Effect mount on here. And then the next thing is the this is the stepper motor mount. Just tighten this up a little bit here. So that's gonna go on top of here, like that. Probably gonna fall off right now before I put that on there. I'll show you the Lazy Susan. So this is a four inch Lazy Susan. I've already um, put a little bit of super glue on here to hold those bolts in that position. This, these are about an inch and a half. They could be an inch. Um, couldn't find any inch ones. There's a number, these are number 10 flathead. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna leave them like that because they're hidden anyways inside the neck. And uh, the other bolts go in this way. And I uh, did find, I do have some around that are one inch uh, and they're going to go down the other way so uh, let's put uh, this guy on here and this guy on top
So as you can see, uh, that swivels there. And next we want to add our NEMA 7, or sorry, add our Hall Effects sensor. I've already got it wired up. So I'll bring it through here. Then we're going to put on our spacer. Voila! Here is um, our large pulley and I already have the magnet uh, mounted in there. And by the way, it, it is important the direction the magnet faces. One side of the magnet does not affect the hall sensor at all so you have to test it out before you push it in there or epoxy it in there make sure you have the right side facing out put that in there uh, let me just uh, turn that so you can actually see the magnet there so it's going to turn hit the limit switch and then go into its actual programmed state uh, next, uh, this is the um, belt. It says, I'm not sure if you can read it there or not, but it says 400 2GT on it. So this is going to go on here. Okay, what I'll do is I'll activate him before we put the neck on um, so you can see that work. Um, before we do that, we need to plug in our stepper motor wires. And here we go. So it's going to move. gets detected, stops, now it goes into random position. So there's three parts of the randomness to this. It's the time between movements is random, the speed that the movement happens is random, and the number of steps it moves is random. Here I'll put Chewbacca on top so you can see the movement a little bit better. So starting off, It'll move to one side, register the limit, and then move into random position until uh, it's powered down. Now in the sketch I've got uh, a little something special I'll show you uh, once we do uh, the final reveal with the um, tilt mechanism working. So it's quiet, it's stable, and with the voice and the eyes lit, lit up and the tilt working at the exact same time, I think it'll look pretty good. Um, thanks for watching my video. Please stick around for uh, the thought from uh, the Ultimate Maker, and uh, we'll see you next time.